And here we are guys, welcome back to another video. So here we're looking at question 3 for the June 2017 LXLC free paper. Now, let's jump straight to it. So looking at the figure, it states that figure 1 shows a sketch of part of the graph of y equals gx, where the function gx is given by 3 plus the square root of x plus 2. And this is obviously valid for x squared equal minus 2. A. State the range of g. Okay, so what exactly is the range? Well, we know that range is pretty much all the values that g can actually take for a given domain. And since our given domain is x squared equals minus 2, we can observe that the minimum range, minimum range just by looking at it graphically, is at the, at the most negative point, or the least negative point, as we should say. And that's at x equals minus 2. So here's a little dotted line, so minimum range should be there. Now, of course, if that's the minimum range of x minus 2, then all we do is, of course, plug in x minus 2. Then g should give us 3. And that's it, guys. We know clearly that the minimum range for g is 3, so g takes values anything greater or equal than 3. Okay, not bad. So let's move on to part b. So here we're supposed to find the inverse function of g and state its domain. Now, what I state is that we should, of course, let y equals the inverse of g and then rewrite the function in the following way. So, basically, all you really want to do is flip gx with the letter x and flip uh, x with the letter y. So, the function looks a bit like this. Okay? Now, all you want to do is just solve for y because we know that y is going to be the inverse. So, subtracting 3 across and then squaring the left-hand side and right-hand side, of course, that function and of course and then finally subtracting 2 we should get the inverse function here and the one special property about the these inverse functions and functions that we know that the domain of the inverse is equal to the range of the original function likewise the range of the inverse is equal to the domain of the original function hence we can say that the the range of the inverse um, the range of the inverse is greater equal minus 2 and its domain is greater than equal than 3. Voila. Not so bad, not so bad at all. Alright, so, part C. Okay, so find the exact value for x which satisfies the function gx equals x. So guys, this is just a bit of algebra. So, let's tackle it down. So, let's try and solve the following equation for x equals 3 plus root x plus 2. So what I did is just subtract 3 across and then squared both sides, which will give us x minus 3 squared equals x plus 2. And then expanding the, the quadratic on the left will give us x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then of course subtracting x and 2 from the right to the left will give us the, finally the following quadratic expression. x squared minus 7x plus 7. All equal to 0. Now using the quadratic formula, this is what we should get. So plug in all the figures in. You should get, it should look something like this on your calculator. And then finally you should get x equals 7 plus minus root 21 all over 2 and now since x must be greater or equal than 3 which of course satisfies the inverse property and um, and so on we should therefore get x equals 7 plus root 21 over 2 the thing is if we chose a negative value it would be less than 3 so that would not be the valid solution that will satisfy the function itself and of course it will cause a problem and lastly d hence state the value of a for which the following function of a g is equal to its inverse. Now, if we kind of um, look back, we can clearly see that from part C, it said that g x equals x. So, so clearly, if g x equals x, that means g x g a equals a, which also equals the inverse a. So, in fact, all three equal each other. If that's the case, that means all these functions must equal a. And the previous solution we found that g x equals x. And x was 7 plus root 21 over 2. So clearly, a equals 7 plus root 21 over 2. Now, to check if this is correct, well, you don't have to check. It's just say state, so it's one mark. You can tidy the following polynomial. So I just did a little extra working. So you don't need necessarily to do this, but this is just for the enthusiast. So if you want to solve this completely, you can make ga equal to the inverse of a. And then expanding, you know, rewriting the function and expanding the left and the right you'd eventually get a, f um, a fourth power polynomial. Now, you can't actually solve this directly without using an educated guess 
or knowing at least what solution or one one of uh, at least solution or one of its uh, values. Of course, we know the first solution would be a equals seven plus root one over two. And really, if you just stop through that, then of course you're gonna get a nice, lovely zero. And that's it, guys. You know, I hope this video helped and. Um, let me know if you've got any other questions, yeah? Other than that, I want you all to have a nice, amazing day and uh, check back for question four and the rest of my paper. And of course, if you're really enjoying these videos, please give this a like, share it to your friends, and of course, um, hit the bell on the playlist. And other than that, I shall uh, see you guys soon. Ciao.